everybody! Well, today I'm coming to you guys from inside villa number one here. And that's because today I'm going to talk about what it's really like to own a resort and run a resort here in Mexico. And was it what we thought? Uh, did we get in over our head? Are we thinking about bagging this whole thing and uh, uh, doing something else? Well, you're going to find out on this episode of Douglas and Esperanza's Adventures. Hold on a second. You're going to want to watch till the end of the video today because I have an announcement. It's about one of our biggest comments and requests for Pufferfish Villas. You're going to hear about it at the end of the video. And let's just say it rhymes with tickle. We're Douglas and Esperanza, and we decided to leave our lives in the U.S., sell almost everything we own, and move to Baja California Sur, where we decided to start a resort in the magical town of Loreto, Mexico. Please come with us to follow our journey and live before you die. So we are between rentals. In fact, we have both villas open for two days. So it gives me a chance to get in, do some uh, maintenance that need to be done, and to uh, do a little maintenance outside down here at the villas that we don't want to do when there's guests here. We try, when there's guests here, we try not to, uh, you know, intrude on the guest space. We want this to be your personal space. So we're down here to do the daily activities and that, but uh, we don't do any maintenance or any big jobs or anything like that when there's guests here. And that's because we don't want to intrude on our guests. We want them to be able to enjoy the peaceful, calm, relaxing environment here without somebody trying to do some work around them. So, but now that we've got a couple days, we haven't had two days with both villas, I don't think since last year. We've been so booked. And having a little break lets me get down here to the villas, do a very thorough inspection inside each villa, looking for anything that is wear and tear item or something that isn't working very well or broken, or anything like that. So one of the things we had that's been a problem for a while, but we haven't had a break where we could get in here and actually address it was these hooks. Now we had some whale tail hooks here. The whale tail hooks were really cool looking. They were awesome. And we left them down here for a long time after they were causing problems because they were just so cool. We were trying to, you know, figure out a way to make them work, but we just couldn't. They were doing two things. One, they were really pointy on the edge so they would catch the towels and people would try to pull the towels off them, actually dig into the towels and start to rip them. And the other thing is they were made out of a metal that rust and they had a green paint on them, but the green paint got quickly worn off up at the tips of the whale tail and then it started putting rust marks on the towels. And uh, we actually ruined several towels had to take them out of service because we only, I mean, our, our, we don't want any marks that you can see, any stains on the towels. So as soon as those were stained by those rust marks, they had to come out of service. And after we lost about three towels, I'm like, this is enough. We got to get these out of here because those towels are expensive. We can't keep, afford to keep having them wrecked. So uh, Esperanza found just a different hook to put up here. Uh, and hopefully these won't rust. They didn't totally cover the holes, so I had to do some patching around the hooks, and I need to do a little paint job. You can barely see it, but I just did some caulking around here to, to fill in, so I need to paint this today and get that so the, all the smell will be out of here by the time our guests show up day after tomorrow. And otherwise than that, not a lot going on in here now things i'll do that are kind of like maintenance that i like to do whenever i can get in here um these can be done between guests even if they're same day guests but uh i don't get down here a lot uh clean the drain out in the shower the drain always gets clogged with hair if you leave it for 
three, four weeks and you have uh, people with long hair, uh, it generally tends to start to clog up then the drain starts to get slow. So that's just an ongoing maintenance issue. Clean the drain out. Uh, it's not very fun. You, you know, cleaning a shower drain out, there's all the gooey guck down in there. It's kind of gross, but got to be done. Um, other than that, most of everything in this villa besides that is in really good shape. Now, I did replace the hooks in the other villa yesterday afternoon after the guests left. And so I've got to go over and do the same painting over there. Okay, while we're talking about deferred maintenance, I'll take you outside here and I'll show you some other stuff we're doing out here that uh, need to be done. Now, uh, one big job that I'm gonna get some help. I've got some guys coming, my, my good friend Pepe, and uh, he's gonna bring another guy because we gotta move some big plants and my back is still, if I try to do anything heavy, it, it really does a number on me. So um, this ficus tree, this ficus tree is here and it is a cool place for it. I love it, I love the green, but um, we started really doing some research on the ficus and uh, they are really, really bad in getting into water pipes and sewer pipes. And the water pipes for the pool run right here next to this ficus. So to just avoid any problems in the future, to avoid uh, having this tree break our pipes that go to our pool, and that causes a huge thing and the pool's down for who knows how long, we are going to move this tree and we're actually probably going to move it up to our house and put it at the end of the pool area to, because these get humongous down here. These trees can get, you know, 20 feet tall, but they can get 25, 30 feet wide even, even 40 feet wide, some of the really big old ones I've seen in town. So give you a ton of shade and a ton of, uh, you know, um, privacy and all that. So that's a big job that's got to be done. We don't want to do when guests are around. Uh, here you see the pool. Now, uh, excuse the wind noise if there's wind noise. It's really windy today. This is about the windiest time of the year here uh, in the spring. And so uh, we're right at the end of windy season. Then in summer, it will be all calm. Kind of when you need the wind in the summer when it's really hot, it's pretty calm. And then, uh, then we'll get into the fall monsoon season. So then we'll have storms. But uh, over here in the cabana, now the cushions are in what I call nighttime mode. Uh, so this is another problem that we had to figure out how to take care of. We have a lot of feral cats around here. And the feral cats, of course, decided these cushions are such an awesome place to sleep at night. And so they come up here and they sleep on the cushions. Now that wouldn't be that bad, but then I guess the cats, male cats, decide that they want to mark their territory so the other cats don't come sleep on the cushions. So they pee on the cushions, they spray them. They, I mean, we've had many, many times before we start doing this that cats had peed on the cushions overnight, come down here, it's gross got to spend a lot of time cleaning it up and make sure you get all the the pee and all of the smell out of the cushions luckily there's some umbrella fabric and they're coated and they're waterproof so it's pretty easy to clean them but we had to come up with a solution so it's pretty hard to keep cats away um, I don't know of any good way to keep the cats during the night from sleeping on our cushions here we tried a couple different things nothing worked at all so we came uh we originally were gonna, gonna get to the point where either we had to remove the cushions every night but that's a lot of work there's quite a few cushions here we'd have to pull them all every night take them into the laundry room put them in there and then every morning bring them back out that was a huge pain uh we looked at covering them with covers that's a possibility but then if the wind blows the covers want to blow off and uh, it's just still a lot of problem. So I figured this out. If we 
tip the cushions up like this at night, then the cats have nowhere really to lay. And I haven't seen any evidence that they're laying on them. I mean, I suppose they could lay up here, but they don't seem to want to. And uh, because I could tell because they leave cat hair on here when they lay on here. And the second thing that this does is it gives them no place to stand and spray against the cushion like they want to do because it would stand on the seat and spray onto the back cushion and then it would drain down on the cushion. So this has so far solved that problem. It's super easy. Just tip them all up at night and then take them, tip them all back down in the morning. Uh, right now they're tipped up because we don't have any guests. And so nobody's going to be down here. We're not going to be down here. So there's no reason to to put them back out every morning and so uh but then uh, you know once we have guests every morning i come down here and we'll talk about my morning uh duties here coming up so this is the other big job we're going to try to get done tomorrow and this is the job that destroyed my back this is what caused my original back injury back in no december the end of december i still my back is still maybe 75 percent today uh i if i do anything by the end of the day if i do any heavy work by the end of the day my back really is really sore and so i didn't want to finish this job myself i i would probably have to wait a year until my back was healed up enough that i could do it so i've got again and some guys coming over tomorrow and they are going to finish this and so what I've been doing is planting these plants and you can see that I got up to here, got these planted, these mother-in-law tongue, and then from here on, they are just in pots. We are going to get uh, the guys to come in, fill in the rest of this and plant all these plants. And we have a bonus because the other day when we got a whole bunch of salvage plants from a, a place where they're going to do some uh, development, I got a ton of mother-in-law's tongue and i have a whole bunch so while they're doing this we're also going to fill in super thick mother-in-law's tongue all on the back here i think it's going to look awesome and i saved a whole probably a hundred plants a hundred mother-in-law tongues plants that are this big so super excited about that we're going to get this done and that's going to look so much better came back here in the villa because uh it's pretty windy out there and i don't want to have to deal with the wind noise while i'm editing so is owning and running a resort in mexico what we expected i think generally overall it's very close to what we expected um the duties that i have every day which is the pool which you can see the pool right out the the window here from Villa One, the pool villa. My daily routine is basically come down, uh, put all the cushions back, clean all the cushions. I clean all the chairs, all the tables, wipe them all down because, uh, you know, there's we've got a dirt road. It's dusty here, especially when the wind blows. And so everything generally needs to be wiped down every other day. Uh, if it's really windy every day, if it's not really windy, you can go every other day and it's still, everything's really clean. And I wipe everything down all the way across outside. Everything outside gets wiped down every time I do that. And then uh, I take the pool cover off. We have the pool cover on at night still. Uh, hopefully in the next probably three weeks, we'll be able to stop putting the pool cover on because it's gonna be warm enough that the pool isn't going to lose that much heat during the night and we won't need the cover anymore. So I won't have to do that anymore, but I still have to come down, check the pool. Uh, the pool probably needs to be vacuumed once a week. I do have a robot vacuum, but the robot vacuum doesn't help with the dust. It gets all the big stuff. It gets some of the grainy, bigger sand stuff out, but the dust, it just strews all the dust up then it settles back down and then there's dust in all the grout lines in the pool. So I usually use a vacuum every two or three days, the, the robot vacuum. Uh, and then about once a week, I will go through and vacuum because then all that dust gets sucked up into the vacuum and goes directly into the filter. And the filter is 
uh, small enough filter filtration to be able to catch all that dust so it doesn't go back into the pool. So that's really the extent of uh, my daily morning activities. The pool does need chlorine every two, three days. It's getting more frequent now that we're getting into the summer with the sun, but uh, uh, that's just testing the pool. And then if it needs chlorine, I put chlorine in it. Other duties that I have is probably uh, every day, but generally it doesn't need it every day. If it's been windy, there'll be some debris, leaf debris, palm frond debris that I clean out. Um, uh, otherwise, usually only need to do that about once a week, go around, clean out all the debris. Almost all of the plants we have are on an automatic watering system, so I don't have to worry about that. There are a few new ones, and as I put new ones in, I will usually wait to see, make sure they don't die because a lot of them have been transplanted. There's a good possibility they're going to die after they have set in. And I'm confident they're in there good. Then I'll attach them to the sprinkler system. So I do from time to time have some plants that I have to water by hand, but generally not too much. Um, you know, there is a couple times a year, bigger maintenance of trimming the palm fronds and doing that stuff, but that's not very often. So then there's Esperanza. Esperanza basically is still handling the uh, ongoing uh, supplies and that type of thing. So she keeps all the... I told you the wind was blowing hard. Good thing that didn't break. <laughs> All right. I should probably close this window so that doesn't happen again. But this is a good thing to know because that could happen to a guest and then that could break and that wouldn't be the guest's fault because they just had the window open and it was, and it was uh, windy in here. But uh, back to Esperanza. So she make sure we've got everything we need and so that soaps that you know soap shampoo body wash all that stuff the k cups you know salt and pepper all these little things uh she also keeps tabs on our water make sure we have enough water and a lot of times she goes and gets the water uh, when we need to and then she has to maintain all the linens and towels so we have a lot of linens, a lot of towels. So in the bedroom, we wash everything on the bed that touches the uh, guests. So except for the pillows and the duvet cover core, we wash everything else. So the throw blankets, the uh, duvet cover, there's a cover that goes over the duvet cover so you never touch the part that's in the middle. Uh, all the pillowcases, the sheets, all that gets changed and washed between every single guest. And hotels, whether you think so or not, hotel people will tell you they take a lot of shortcuts. And here in Mexico, they can take a lot of shortcuts. There's a lot of times that most of your linens on the bed haven't been changed. Maybe even the sheets haven't been changed. If they were really clean, they just come back and make the bed and they're all good because they aren't dirty. That will never happen here. Everything, regardless of whether it's clean or anything, gets washed between guests. So you never have to worry about it. Same thing with every towel, every, every uh, beach towel, everything else. If it has been unfolded or touched, then it gets washed. And so uh, that creates two things. One, a tremendous amount of laundry. It's three loads per, usually per uh, flip. And it also creates the, you know, we are going to go through towels and linens and everything, but we feel like it is just so important to make sure that everything is clean, everything is sanitized, because that is the one thing that has wrecked many times for us when we've gone to a hotel and we've gone in and it has been dirty. We've gone to hotels here in Mexico where it looks like they just made the bed from the last guest. They didn't clean anything, didn't clean any of the linens. The bathroom was disgusting. And needless to say, we didn't stay in those places we left. But 
uh, we don't want anyone ever to have any experience like that here. So rest assured here at Pufferfish Villas, you are going to have a beautiful, luxury, clean linens and towels every single time. So that creates another job for Esperanza, and that's that Esperanza helps with some of the laundry. Some of the times when we have stained items, uh, they have to be soaked overnight. And so usually Esperanza finishes up all those, and that requires coming down, checking them after they soaked overnight, see if the stains are out. If the stains are out, treat them again, soak them again. Sometimes you have to go through three or four cycles of soaking and rinsing and soaking and rinsing before you are going to get those uh, stains out and you don't want to run those through the dryer before you get the stains out or then they're in there forever and they're wrecked now we have lost some uh towels uh i don't think we've lost any sheets yet uh we've got really good quality sheets i mean these are about a hundred dollars a set for these sheets they're not cheap you know hotel sheets they're very nice and so we're, I'm happy that we haven't lost any of those, but we have lost some different towels. And, uh, and I'll ask this, this is my PSA for this episode. Uh, please, when you go to uh, any hotel, don't put your suitcase on the bed. This is the reason we had to switch. Our housekeeper used to make these awesome designs with the uh, throw blanket on the bed. And it looked awesome, like you see, like, on below deck or something where they make an awesome design with a throw blanket. But we had many occurrences of people putting their luggage on the bed and then the wheels are dirty. Even if you think it is not wet, anything else, the wheels collect dust, dirt, and then that dirt will get on our super bright, super clean looking duvet cover or sheets and it is really difficult to get out so please 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 use the we have a uh, you know a caddy here uh, I think you call it a caddy to put your suitcase on uh, if you don't want to use that there's a awesome countertop here you're welcome to put your suitcase there you can put your stuff into the closet and put your suitcase in the bottom of the closet so there's lots of options here uh, just Please be nice to your hospitality people and, uh, and keep those luggage off the linens. But no matter what happens, eventually linens are going to get stained, towels are going to get stained. We do not leave any stained items in service. So those things get taken out and then Esperanza has to replace them. And so we have a lot of replacements already and ready to go. You know, we have enough for probably four sets right now, but uh, as those things get dis damaged and taken out, then we have to get new stuff and Esperanza is continually working on that and sourcing, you know, four sets of the bed throws and four sets of the throws on the uh, chair out there. and. Of course, all the linens and all the towels and pool towels. We've got like 50 pool towels. So uh, Esperanza does a lot of that work, making sure that we're not going to get to a point that we uh, don't have the linens or towels we need for a villa when we need them. So the big question is, would we do it again? And the answer is absolutely. And that should be evident because we're working as hard as we can to be able to build two more villas. And I'll tell you a little secret about that here. So uh, I have been saying for many, many months that we're going to build three more villas. And that was our plan. But a lot of people put in requests and said you should put in a pickleball court. And originally I was totally against it. In several of the comments I was like, no, we don't have room. It's too noisy all these different things but we have had so many people say they would really like the pickleball court that we actually have went back and looked at our plan and we looked at if we added a pickleball court we have to give up one of the villas that we're going to build build so we'll only be building two more villas so we i ran a spreadsheet i ran all the numbers 
of our occupancy and all that and with four villas and five villas and it really became evident especially with all the extra costs we have with each villa and the profit margin that if we could increase our occupancy by as little as like 15 percent we could make as much as having the fifth villa and from all the feedback we've had I really do believe that putting in a pickleball court here will increase our occupancy to the point that it will make up for that fifth villa that we will be giving up. So, this might change in the future, but as of right now, our plan has a pickleball court over in the corner by the fire pit. And I've done a lot of work and I've figured out how to put a wall a, we're going to put a concrete wall in between the pickleball court and the villas and so that should help keep a lot of the noise down and everything else that'll also give us room over there for uh, uh, area that we are going to set up for definitely cornhole and we're going to see if we can do shuffleboard uh, uh, if I can get a surface put in there without too much money we may even do shuffleboard could be coming soon to Pufferfish Villas Pickleball free with your stay. Now how about that? So I'll end this video by saying this is still the best move we ever made. You know for us the weather was like the number one reason to move down here. We originally came from Oregon where it's dark and gray and cloudy for much of the year. We went to San Diego and even there it is dark and cloudy and rainy for several months of the year. It is very cold in the winter down to freezing and we just wanted warmer and sunnier. And look at this. I mean this is Loretto. This is one of the biggest things of Loretto. Sunny almost every single day of the year. Um, literally maybe 350 360 days a year of sun uh sometimes it's windy sometimes it's hot but you always have that sun when you look out the window and it's never really cold i mean 50 is maybe the lowest ever gets here so uh we are so happy you know i love running the resort here uh esperanza likes doing her part and if you know she ever gets to the point that she doesn't Either I take it over or we hire somebody to manage the resort and take it over. So we're just working to sell our lots. We already sold our trailer. So we actually sold the trailer, but we are gonna be storing it for the uh, people that bought it. So you're gonna see it for next year, but it's actually sold. So uh, that's good. Uh, we're gonna work to sell our lots in the back. That will give us the funds we need to complete the rest of the villas and maybe a pickleball court so I can't wait so thanks everybody for watching the video and never forget to live before you die